This problem involves array simulation. We're given the code for a method called mystery, which is passed an array of ints as a parameter, and we're asked to hand simulate what the code does. We're given various scenarios here, different arrays that will be passed to the method, and we're asked to figure out for each of these what values will be stored in the array when the code is done executing. So let's go through each one of these in turn. The first case involves an array of two values, storing a 6 and a 3. I've set up a file that has the code that we're supposed to execute and a place here for us to keep track of what's going on with the variables. So here's the array that stores the 6 and the 3 at indexes 0 and 1. And this is a place to store the variable i, which is the for loop variable. So the first thing this code does when it enters the for loop is to initialize i to be 1. And then it asks whether i is less than list.length. This list is of length 2, so it asks whether 1 is less than 2. The answer is yes. So it enters the for loop. It's going to execute the body of the for loop. This is an assignment statement. So the first thing that it's going to do is to evaluate the right-hand side of the assignment statement. So it's going to figure out what list i plus list i minus 1 is equal to. i is 1, so it's going to be adding list 1 and list 0. So that's adding list 1, this value here, with list 0, this value here. In other words, it's adding 3 and 6. It's going to come up with an answer of 9. And it stores that result in list i which is list 1. So it stores that result in index 1 of the array. The 9 goes there. Then it comes around the for loop and increments i. So i goes from 1 to 2. It again asks whether i is less than list.length. The length of this is 2. It asks whether 2 is less than 2. The answer is no. So the test fails. So that means that we're finished executing this for loop. And once we're done with that, we're finished with the method. So we exit this method with the array now storing the values 6 and 9. So that's our first answer, is that we end up with the values 6 and 9 for this particular array. The second case is a little odd. We're given an array that has just a single element in it. So I've set up a space for us to simulate that as well. And this hardly even looks like an array. We normally think of an array as having lots of different values in it. But there's no reason that an array can't have a length of 1. So this value 8 is the only value stored in the array. It's stored at index 0. Again, the first thing the code does is to initialize i to be 1. And then it asks whether i is less than list.length. This list has a length of 1. So it asks whether 1 is less than 1. And the answer is no. So the test fails immediately. So we never even execute the body of this loop. We just exit the for loop right away, and we're done executing the method. So in this case, there's no change to the array that was passed. So our answer for this second one is that the array still stores the value 8, just as it did before. This third case involves an array of length 3 with the values 2 and 4 and 6. So here's our array of length 3 with 2 and 4 and 6. And so again, the first thing we do is we initialize i to be 1. We ask whether i is less than list.length. The length here is 3, and 1 is less than 3. So we execute the body of the for loop. Again, we evaluate the right-hand side of the assignment statement first. For an i of 1, we're adding list 1 and list 0. List 1 is this value 4. List 0 is this value 2. So 4 plus 2 is 6. And we store that answer in list i, which is list 1. So list 1 is reassigned the value 6. Then we come around the for loop and increment i. So i goes from 1 to 2. We ask whether i is less than list.length. Length is 3. 2 is less than 3. So we go into the for loop again. Now when we execute this statement, when we're adding list i with list i minus 1, because i has changed, we're going to be adding different values. We're going to add list 2 with list 1. So list 2, this value right here, with list 1. And 6 plus 6 is 12. That's what we get when we add the two together. And we store the result in list i, which is list 2. So a 12 goes into array index 2. Then we come around our for loop, increment i again. So i goes from 2 to 3. We ask whether i is less than list length. Is 3 less than 3? The answer is no. 
the test fails, and so we finish executing the for loop, we finish executing the method. So this time we exit with the array storing the values 2, 6, 12. So that's our answer in this third case, 2 and 6 and 12. Our next case involves four different values, an array that stores 1, 2, 3, 4. So here's our array of length 4. Again, we start by initializing i as, uh, to 1. We ask whether i is less than list.length. In this case, the length is going to be 4. 1 is less than 4, so we execute the body of the loop. And so we're going to evaluate what list i plus list i minus 1 is equal to. When i is 1, we're adding list 1 with list 0, list 1 with list 0. 2 plus 1 is 3. That's the result that we get. And we store our answer in list i, which is list 1. So we store our answer here in list 1. The 3 that we got from adding the two numbers together goes there. Then we come around the for loop. We increment i. So i goes from 1 to 2. And we ask whether i is less than list i length. 2 is less than 4. So we're going to execute the loop again. And now that i is 2, we're adding list 2 with list 1, list 2 with list 1, so 3 plus 3 is 6, and storing the result in list i, storing the result in list 2, the 6 gets stored here. We come around the for loop again, i gets incremented, i goes from 2 to 3, and 3 is less than the length of this list, which is 4, 3 is less than 4, so we're going to execute one more time. Now we add list 3 with list 2. So we're going to add lists of 3 with lists of 2. This 4 added to this 6. 4 plus 6 is 10. We store the answer in list i, which is list 3. So the 10 goes right here. And so then we come around the loop. We increment i by 1. i becomes 4. And uh, we ask whether i is less than list.length. The length here is 4. 4 is not less than 4, so the test fails. We break out of the for loop, and then we finished executing the method. So here we end with the array values 1, 3, 6, and 10. So that's our answer for this next case, 1, 3, 6, and 10. This final array, we have kind of a jumble of values here, five different numbers, 7, 3, 2, 0, 5. And so Here's our final version of that, 73205. Probably by now you would have figured out the pattern of what this code is doing. It's adding list i with list i minus 1. This is two adjacent elements of the array. Always the ith value being added to the one that comes just before it. And that with i starting at 1. So let's do this one a little bit faster. So here i is initialized to 1. So we're looking at this element, element 1 of the array, and we add it to the one that comes before it, the 3 plus the 7, the one that comes before it. We get an answer of 10, and we store that result right here. So we're basically adding into list 1 the value that comes before it. So the 3 becomes a 10, and then we increment i by coming around the loop. In other words, we're going to the next element in the array. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to replace this value with the sum of it and what comes before it. So it's a 10 and a 2. They add up to a 12. So we replace this value with a 12. And then again, we increment i to come back around the loop. Now we're going to deal with list 3. And what we do is to replace list 3 with the sum of the, these two values, the one that comes before it, and list 3. So 12 plus 0 is 12. So that becomes the new value of list 3. We increment i to be 4. So we deal with this final element here. We replace it with the sum of it and the one that comes before it. 12 plus 5 is 17. So that goes into list 4. And we increment our i, I to be 5. And just as with all of the other examples, now that i has gotten up to the length of the list, the loop stops executing because 5 is not less than the length of 5, so this test fails. So we finish executing the for loop, which finishes the method. And in this case, we end up with the values 7, 10, 12, 12, 17. So that's our final answer here for this last case, and that completes this problem.